This is the start of a new series of water related mechanics. The first video will be on how to make a realistic island. This video covers making a realistic landscape material with multiple different materials you can add and blend between. There are different types of sand materials used here to make it more realistic such as rough sand, smooth sand, and wet sand. I also cover adding foliage such as trees, bushes, grass, and others. There are also scattered rocks and pebbles which also use runtime virtual textures so they realistically blend in with the ground such as with the sand here. An ocean is also added using the water plugin, and you can add foliage underwater as well easily. I also populated this area with some larger rocks. These rocks also have runtime virtual textures so they look much more realistic and like a part of the environment since they blend in with the sand. You can add on to this however you want to make whatever type of island you need. First make a project or open your current one if you already have one. I will make mine use the third person template so we can make mechanics such as swimming and boat riding later. Now open plugins and enable the buoyancy, water, and water extras plugin. Buoyancy will be used later in the series so I am enabling it now. Then enable the land mass plugin. You will need to restart your editor after enabling them. I will now make a new level using the basic template. Make a new folder for the island and save the new level in it. Delete the default floor then switch to landscape mode. Make sure enable edit layers is turned on. You can change the size of the landscape using the section size and sections per component settings. I will use 63 by 63 with a sections per component size of 2 by 2. Now go back to selection mode. Search for water body ocean in the add actors section and add it. Select both the water body ocean and water zone and reset their locations back to the world origin. You should see the water now. The yellow box is the extent of the ocean. To change it, select the water zone and update the zone extent. Make sure it isn't too high and reasonable based on the level size as it will affect performance. I am going to go with a size of 200,000. Then go to the water body ocean and change the extent size to the same values to update the ocean. You can change the cutoff point of the ocean by selecting the spline points. I am going to make the island a bit wider by extending the points. You may also notice there is an indentation around the island. You can fix this by changing the Z value of the water body ocean. The value which worked for me was 60. I will add the default third person character by dragging it into the world and changing the auto possess player to zero.
Now go back to landscape mode. You can see there is a water layer here and you can toggle its visibility. This is why you need to enable edit layers. Right click and create a new layer for the main island. Next click on blueprint and select the land mass brush. Then click anywhere in the level to add it. Sometimes it won't add properly so just undo and redo it and it will appear. You can now select any of the points and move it to modify the island shape. To make new points, hold ALT and move it using the gizmo. The start and end points will be automatically connected to create a whole closed shape. I will also select all the points and change it to linear so it is consistent throughout. Play around with the shape and points until it fits your liking. We will now modify its details. Select the land mass and go to the details panel. First is fall off. If you enable cap shape the top will be flat and you can drag it up vertically to give it height. Fall off angle determines the angle at the edges so a higher value will make the land mass taller. You can also change the fall off mode to use width so it will instead be controlled by the fall off width value. You can make it more or less steep. Next is blur shape which as its name suggests blurs the edges of the land mass. Since this is a mountain-like mass, I will keep it relatively low to something like 2 so it is still sharp. Next is the most important one which is curl noise. The best way is to trial and error with values until it looks right but curl noise essentially deforms the mass with noise so it looks more like an island. Next is displacement. This usually deforms the bottom of the land mass where it connects with the landscape. If it goes down into the landscape you can move the land mass up to adjust for it. Finally is terracing, you can change the alpha value to make it more blocky if you want. That is all for the main island. I will now make a new layer for an outer land mass deformation. I will make it go around the back of the island. You can see the land masses overlap with each other which is not what I want for this one. To fix it, go to the details and change the brush type to spline mesh first so it doesn't connect the start and end points, then change the blend mode to additive so it doesn't overwrite any other layers but adds onto it. I will now set the other options in time lapse as it is just the same process. I will add one final layer to make a smaller mountain on the left side.
it is also a good idea to categorize everything into folders so it is more organized. Since we made different layers for each part, you can easily remove any if needed. We will now set up the runtime virtual textures. Make a new folder for it.v. Search for runtime virtual texture volume and add it. Reset its position. Click the eyedropper tool next to bounce align actor and select your landscape. Then go to the virtual texture and create a new asset for it in the folder we just made. Then click set bounce and it will automatically make it cover the whole landscape. This one was for the base color RVT. Duplicate it for the height one. Make another asset for this one and set the bounds. Open the texture and change the virtual texture content to world height. You can also modify the sizes if you want. I will now download the materials I want the landscape to use in Quixel Bridge, you can use any materials you want. The materials I am getting is mossy forest floor for grass, Thai rippled beach sand for smooth sand, Thai rippled sand for rough sand, Thai wet beach sand for the shoreline sand, Coral beach sand for the underwater sand, and gravel ground for the island's mountain. You can get as many other materials as you want the landscape to have. Now make a new material. Firstly, search for used with static lighting and enable it. Now add a landscape layer blend node and add as many layers to it as you need. I downloaded 5 materials so we'll add 5. Change each layer name to the ones you are using. Next make a new material function called landscape layer. This function and material is based off this amazing video by Nitrogen as I'm not that good with materials. You can watch his video if you want to understand in depth what these nodes are doing.
Now find a metal material from the starter content. Copy the texture variation part over to the function and multiply the XYZ texture by it before connecting it to base color. Add the function to the landscape material. This one will be for the grass. Add a texture object for the base. Find the grass material and we only need the textures from it. Set the texture to the diffuse. Then drag the pack texture from it and connect the red and green channels to the corresponding inputs of the function. Duplicate the texture object for the normal and set the texture accordingly. Make a new scalar parameter for the tiling and set the default value to something like 1500. Now duplicate this part for each of the other materials. Make sure to change the parameter names for the tiling so it creates new ones for each. Once you have all, connect the outputs of each to the corresponding landscape layer in the blend node. This setup will allow us to paint the landscape with each of the layers we add. Copy the following nodes, which again you can watch Nitrogen's video if you want to understand exactly how it works. Change these textures to the gravel one for the island mountain. This setup automatically adds the gravel texture based on the angle of the surface at that point so since the island will be steep it will automatically have gravel and we don't need to manually paint it. Then get material attributes and add 4 nodes to it for the base color, specular, roughness and normal. Add a runtime virtual texture output node and connect each one. For the normal however, add a transform vector to it first from tangent space to world space. This is since the RVT works based on the world position of each. For the height, 
add an absolute world position with the XYZ being masked only in the blue channel. This lets runtime virtual texture volumes be able to read from this material. Then break the material attributes and connect the corresponding fields. Create a material instance and set it as the landscape's material. Most of it will be black by default since we need to set up the layers for it. Go to landscape mode and to the painting tab. Click the add icon and press weight blended layer. Make sure you don't select non weight blended as it will give some odd results. Add layers for the rest of the materials too. Now select a different layer and click to paint. A useful shortcut is you can use the left and right brackets to change the brush size. I will paint the middle section with rough sand. You can adjust the tool strength to control the transparency. Under it I will paint a line of smooth sand. You can see it doesn't blend for the transition but we will do that after. I will paint a ring of wet sand around the shoreline. The rest of the underwater landscape I will paint with the coral sand. Now we will smooth the transitions. Select the smooth option and the base layer. This part might be a bit confusing since the results will only work if you have the correct layers selected. I will first smooth the rough sand. You can see these weird artifacts and lines. To fix this I will smooth with the grass layer selected. You may need to switch back and forth between different layers until the smoothing looks correct. I will finish the rest in time lapse so you can skip to the time shown if you want. You can also paint over with a layer then smooth that same layer. Now we will modify the material instance now that the painting is done. Open the instance. You can see that the painted landscape updates based on the values we change. 
you can make the texture smaller or larger by changing the corresponding tiling value. It is a good idea to play the game to see if it looks good in game. Changing the contrast value will make the painted layers in the mountain softer or harder. Height min and max is used to control the angle at which the auto gravel material is applied. The values will require a lot of trial and error to see which ones work best for you. We will now add foliage to populate the island. I will use this free asset called Landscape Pro for the tree and other vegetation assets. You can use any you want. In Unreal Engine, switch to foliage mode. You can add the meshes where it says drop foliage here to add them. I am first going to add these three branches. The density by default for new ones will be 100 which is very heavy so for the branches I will reduce it down to 1. Even that was a bit too high so I will try 0.1. You can also change the min and max x scale so that each branch is a different randomly generated size. Next I will add a bush and find a good density value for it as well. Since this process of adding the foliage and finding the correct density and scale is repetitive I will do it in time lapse. Since clovers are rare, I set the density of them to much lower than the others. Depending on your performance and look goals, you can add a lot of grass or little. For the trees, go to the collision presets and change it to block all as by default they are set to no collision and we want it for the trees and larger foliage. Once you have added all your foliage, you can start painting. Make sure you have a suitable brush size for it. You can change the paint density setting to globally change the amount that is painted. Currently the transition is very hard so I will reduce the paint density and paint at the edges. You can hold shift to erase foliage, and there is a separate erase density to control it where 0 will erase all selected foliage types and 1 will erase none. Since the area looks too dense I am erasing a bit from it. I also painted a bit more grass. If you want to delete certain individual foliage, you can click the select tool in foliage, then click on that foliage and press delete. If you want to place one individual instance of a foliage you can use the single tool. I will now add small rocks and pebbles to the sand. This will be stones around the edge of the shoreline. 
I will again do this in time lapse so you can skip ahead to the time shown if you want. Now we will set up meshes to use runtime virtual textures so they blend in with the landscape. Open your material. If you are using Quixel, open the instance and find the parent. I am going to set it up for Quixel so for your own materials you will need to adjust it slightly so it can be used with the material attributes. Add a static switch parameter called blend with landscape so we can select which meshes will use RVT. Then copy the following code which is based off this tutorial by Unreal Sensei. Watch his video to understand runtime virtual textures in depth and how this material works. Select your base RVT texture here. Convert this RVT sample to a parameter so you can change which landscape it samples from easily in the material instance. You can add the RVT parameters to a new group so they are all under one category in the instances. Now enable the blend with landscape parameter.
it is not working and I am getting an error. To fix this, we need to go to project settings and enable virtual texture support. Once you do this you will have to restart the engine. It may take a while since new shaders will need to compile. Now you can see our VT is working and the stone has blended in with the sand. However it covers the whole stone since it is a small mesh. You can change this by adjusting the blend height and fall off values. Blend height controls how much should be covered by RVT and fall off controls the blend amount. Keep adjusting the values until it looks right for you. It is best to change the values by sliding so you can see the differences in real time as opposed to setting different values directly. I will now finish adding the foliage. I will get this Thai Beach Corals pack. You can skip ahead to the time shown if you want since this is just the same process. After you enable virtual texture support, imported Quixel assets will use a different parent material and the textures will be marked as virtual. We need to add the RVT code over to this material as well so copy it over from the original material we added it to before. For underwater foliage I will get Thai beach corals pack and a starfish. Finally I will get ocean seaweed as well. I will repeat the foliage step to find the best density and scales for the underwater foliage. I will only add coral and starfish closer to the shoreline and the rest will be just seaweed. Now we will fix the water collision as currently the player will just walk over it. To fix this we need to change the water body oceans collision preset to water body collision. This is not there by default. Restart the engine. You will get an error and if you scroll to the end, you can add a new entry to the default preset list for water body collision.
Now select the water body ocean and set its collision preset to it. The player can now walk underwater, the next video will be a realistic third person swimming mechanic so you can interact with the water. One problem is that the seaweed is too large but all of it has already been placed. To modify the scale of already placed foliage, enable the foliage you want to modify and select the reapply tool then check scaling and change the values to the new ones. Now if you paint over the already placed foliage it will update its size. You can set the brush size to the maximum value if you want to update every instance of that foliage and then paint over your level. The seaweed looks much better now. Now we will add large rocks and boulders. I will get a few models from Quixel for it. Since we want bigger ones relative to the player, you can check the size icon to see its scale. I am only getting ones that are big enough to be placed as is or scaled up slightly without losing any texture quality. You can download multiple models by shift clicking them then pressing download. Once ready, you can start adding the rocks. It is okay if it goes through the ground a bit as we are going to enable runtime virtual textures for this too. Again, adjust the blend height and fall off values until it looks good enough. For these larger ones, you may want the blend height to be a bit larger so it looks like it has been weathered in this landscape. It doesn't look that good so I will change the parent material from fuzz to the default virtual texture one. By default the meshes have no collision as well and since these are large we need to enable it so the player collides with them. Open the mesh and add collision from the collision drop down. 26 DOP is the most complex collision. If you want it to be extremely accurate collision generated from each face in the mesh, you can set the collision complexity to use complex collision as simple. While this provides much more realistic collision it also is more performance heavy than simple collision so keep that in mind. You also won't be able to simulate physics on meshes with this setting as a side note. I will now add all the other rocks and boulders in time lapse.
These rocks look good in game especially with the water now. Now is a very important part for the look of the level which is post processing and lighting. Add a post process volume and set unbound to true so it covers the whole scene. You can go through all the settings and adjust them to your liking. I will briefly cover the important ones. Bloom will add a glow around bright areas. Also, try not to overdo any of the effects as it will make your scene look oversaturated and not that good. Chromatic aberration is a personal favorite preference of mine and it adds a glitch-like color shift to edges. You can adjust the temp value to make the scene cooler or warmer. The rest of the color grading settings can be set to your liking. Film grain is an optional setting which makes the scene noisy. Make sure to play the game to see how the effects look in game so you can make better adjustments. Search for exposure and set the min and max EV values to the same so there is no auto exposure which looks weird in my opinion. You can leave it as it is if you want auto exposure. Play around with the values until the brightness looks right. Now select the directional light. You can modify the intensity and color if you want. Then adjust the rotation until you find one that looks good for your scene. Then select the exponential height fog and adjust the fog density and height fall off. This can be used to make the background blend better. You can modify the ocean waves if you want. Select the water body ocean and search for the water wave asset. Browse to it. I will create a copy of it in the island folder. Set this as the water wave asset. Open it. You can play around with the values. I will make my ocean more calm by reducing the amplitude. Finally there is an error where the Quixel assets don't have their materials when you launch the game. To fix this, open all the Quixel parent materials being used including the foliage one and enable used with static lighting. The final step is to add any other extra features you want. You can give the island a story by adding different objects to it. You can also add other features such as neighboring islands, other formations, more types of foliage etc. Here are a few items I added to the island to make it more interesting.
That is all for this video. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe for more content. You can purchase this final result from Patreon if you want, link is in the description. Thanks for watching.